Welcome to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman, the podcast dedicated to helping you build the business of your dreams and live the life you always hoped for with valuable and fun tips and info to make your life easier and more fun. And now, here's your host, a man who sprinkles metal shavings on his breakfast cereal just for fun, Jason Silverman. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. I'm your host, Jason Silverman, and I'm thrilled to share some time with you once again today. As you know, I am always in the hunt for interesting as well as super smart Real Deal guests. And I got to tell you, today's show is a winner. I want to introduce my listeners to somebody who's truly been there and done that, and I'm excited to pick his brain for your benefit and secretly a little bit for my benefit as well. Now, for the folks who I work with in any of my coaching programs, my mastermind group, or through Powerful Words Character Development or All-Star Cheer Sites, You know how much I focus on the importance of building and leveraging the most up-to-date marketing systems on the planet and really taking advantage of all the technology that's out there, right? So this show is going to help us to do just that. So today it's going to be my honor and privilege to share an amazing resource with you. You're going to love today's guest. He's got a ton of valuable info about what I consider to be a super hot topic that's going to be both life-changing for you as well as for your business when you implement. So I want to make sure you strap yourself in. Today's show is going to be a blast. Now, as I'm sure you already know, I'm committed to helping business owners just like you to become more successful, enjoy your career more, and in general, make your life significantly more fun. Let's face it, folks. We only get one shot around this merry-go-round. Let's make sure it's one hell of a ride. Alrighty, boys and girls, it is now that time. I want you to stop surfing Facebook, put away your phone, your tablet, your dog, your cat, your spouse, your significant other, anything that might possibly distract you from today's show. You're about to get some great and immediately implementable information, and I don't want you to miss even a second of it. So before we officially get going, let me give you a little bit of background about our guest today. AJ Amix the Twitter rock star, rocks when it comes to Twitter marketing for business. He teaches business executives, small business owners, and marketing professionals how to use Twitter to market their business online to generate more leads and make more money. AJ is the creator of the online course Tweet Like a Rock Star, the author of the upcoming book The Move, Movement Marketing Manifesto, and host of Amex TV. Some people say he's a business coach, smart marketer, consultant, brother, and free spirit. At his core, he just wants to help people create a business and life that they love and make a difference in the world, since that's what he gets to do every day. AJ, welcome to The Real Deal. I'm thrilled to have you today. Jason, thanks for having me, brother. Hey, my pleasure, my pleasure. Listen, before we get started, for those who haven't yet had the opportunity and pleasure of meeting you or hearing you speak, do me a favor. Take a second. Share your story with our listeners. What are you passionate about? What makes you tick? Who is AJ Amix? Yeah, what makes me tick, man, is making money doing what we love. Like we're conditioned that we have to go to school to do something that we hate until we're 65 and then one day that we can retire and then and only then can we live and experience life. And I think that's complete and utter garbage. So dude, my mission has totally been helping people realize that they're way more powerful than they've ever believed possible and then equipping them with the tools and the skill sets to actually pull off Whatever it is that they feel called to create, you know, and I know a lot of your inter- uh, your listeners are you're super creative. Uh, they're all in like these after school type businesses and they're just like making money, you know, and trying to at least anyway, um, doing what they love. So that's like a huge, huge passion of mine. And uh, Twitter has been a marketing avenue that has really helped me be able to do that when I first started, like just being on a shoestring budget, which I'm probably sure a lot of your listeners can relate to. So that's kind of, you know, how I got started in this whole thing. Makes a lot of sense. Well, you know, you, you brought up Twitter, so let's let's dive in there because I got to tell you, I, I know that a lot of folks spend an awful lot of time on Facebook right now, um, and I feel like for many, Twitter is this enigma that's out there, and I got to believe that they're either not using it or not leveraging it properly. So, you know, take a couple seconds if you would. You know, how do you feel like people should? either get started using Twitter or for those who are already leveraging it, what are some best practices? Like where should people dig in? So there's this three-step process and it's really simple. Power, plan, promotion. I mean, I I teach this stuff all all over the, around the country here and um, super simple. And you're right. Like lots of people have this misconception that Twitter is just for branding. Like the big companies use it and they're just like branding, branding. People think like, oh, you just promote stuff like news, CNN, like it's just for that. But that's not the case. It can be used for that. 
but it also can be used for people who have a message. And this is why I always tell people to start at this place of power and know, like, what do you and your business stand for? And also, like, what do you stand against? Because anybody and their mother, their grandmother, they have an account. Um, or if they have a pet monkey, like, they could train them, like, to tweet. Like, it's super simple, right? But it's not going to stand out if you're not coming from this place of personal power where you're, like, preaching your message with conviction. And that's the thing that I, I love about Twitter um, more so than the other platforms is there's no barrier of entry into the game on Twitter. So you can outreach to any single person on the planet, right? Like anybody. You don't have to, you don't have to follow them. You don't have to be their friend. Like it gives you direct access pretty much to anybody. And Twitter is also like a ridiculously crazy search engine. So for those who are running like these small after school programs, you know, we'll talk about, I'm going to use jujitsu as an example. Um, and they're in larger towns. This, now this isn't going to work very well for those in like really small towns, but in larger towns, like I live in Dallas, Dallas, the surrounding uh, Metroplex is, is great for using Twitter, you know, use that and kind of the other cities, like you need to be in a, a little bit larger city or a, sur a suburbia type place, but you can actually search keywords and you can find people who are talking about jujitsu or your topic. Are, or they're searching for that. They have a problem, and then you can engage these people in a conversation and start building relationships with people, not just promoting your stuff, but actually engaging in relevant conversations. And so to me, and what I train people on all the time, is that like Twitter is this ridiculously great networking tool. So like with Facebook, you know, the culture is very different. Like Facebook is this culture, like if, if you're not friends with somebody – and you reach out to them on their wall or you reach out to be, you know, send them a friend request. They're like thinking to themselves, they're like, okay, well, did I go to school with this person? Did I meet them at an event? No, no. Hmm. Where did I meet this person? And then if they can't like figure out where they met you, they're like, man, this person's weird. They're like a creeper or something. And they just like delete the request. Twitter's not like that, man. It's just like you walking into this, this bar of like-minded people and just having epic conversations. And from that, business and life transpires into amazing things. Wow. Okay. So, wow. That, that's, I've never heard it described anything like that. So, <laughs> so, so thank you. So talk to me about first steps, um, aside from opening up a Twitter account Sure. Uh, for somebody who's brand spanking new, sure. um, what, what should they be doing? So the first step is power. And so well, I'm going to give a lot of actionable content through this. So like if somebody listens to this interview and just does the work, like I, I promise we'll get results. So always just do the freaking work and it works. So the first thing is your profile picture. Use a picture of you. Do not use a picture of your company logo. Reason being, people want to connect with people. We live in a day and age when we're tired of people hiding behind brands. Like I want to talk to somebody directly and I'm willing to pay a little bit more to have personal access. And I've tested this theory. Like I've ran accounts for, for large brands in the coaching um, industry, and we ran one for the brand. We ran one for the person who really was the person behind the brand. And the personal profile outperformed the company brand, even though we ran the same strategies, which we're going to get into today. We ran the same types of content that people wanted to connect with the face. So I always tell people, like, Use your personal profile uh, photo, like a really nice headshot, and make sure people can see your eyes. So here's, here's what I, I mean. I have to, like, say this, and I'm not trying to get too woo-woo-y, but, like, when we walk into the offline world, we are drawn to people. And everybody that's listening, they can relate to this. They can, like, walk into a room of people, and they're like, hmm, interesting. I want to go talk to that person. And so they then go and talk to that person. And why? It's like because you're energetically drawn to that person due to their confidence and their certainty levels. Like we want to do business with people who are confident and certain. And so your picture and the way that you're showing up in that image, you need to exude personal power. Otherwise, people are literally going to be, mm, don't want to connect with that person. Like they will feel you through the photo. And I'm not trying to get too woo woo y, but I promise you it makes a big difference when it comes down to your conversion. So the first piece, personal pro uh, profile photo. After that, we come into the bio. And lots of people make the mistakes of just throwing in random words, throwing in random hashtags. Rather than using three to four words that describe you as a human being and life, and in business, because remember, people want to connect with people. They want to know who in the heck you are and if there's any relevant connection there. So use three to four words. So 
people look at mine, it's going to say something like, um, coach, consultant, former rock star, you know, because I, I did tour in a band for 10 years professionally. And that's just like who I am as a person. So people are like, oh man, what an interesting guy here. And then move into what I call the power statement, which is I help who do what. Do not make this complicated. Do not make this sexy. Just keep it ridiculously simple and tell the people this is who I help and this is the results that I get them. Like keep it ridiculously simple. Again, so they're going to come in and I'm going to teach you guys how to connect with the perfect client. You're going to reach out, connect. You're going to be like, man, who's this person? They're going to connect you with you at the, the image. Like, oh, man, looks like an interesting person. They're going to read the bio. This is all happening in, like, microseconds. I mean, just going by very quickly. Like, oh, interesting person. Oh, wait, they can help me to this result. I would like that result. Interesting. Boom, they're going to click the link in the bio. That's going to get you the click-through rate to the website. The last thing in this idea of place of power is your cover photo. So design your cover photo 3,000 pixels wide by 1,000 pixels tall. Twitter will tell you to do 1,500 wide by 500 tall. I'll tell you, if you do that, it's probably going to be pixelated, and there's nothing that screams amateur and unprofessional than a pixelated image. And I learned this like when I was touring as a musician. Like Packaging and positioning, at least in the entertainment industry, is like everything. And it overlays into this game of business, and especially in this online world, because we can create a perceived perception of what people think about us. So, like, we were sitting at um, a Cornerstone Festival out in Illinois. There's 20,000 people that come to the festival, and we're playing at this festival. We just got done doing three shows that day, and we walked back to our little tent because it's kind of like Woodstock, and everybody camps out. It's crazy. It's insane. And so we had a pot of beans that were cooking in the ground in this cast iron skillet, and so we're having some beans um, that evening, and this guy pulls up, and he got there a little late, and we had no clue who he was. And so we invited him over for dinner, and it happened to be this guy, and he was uh, an A&R uh, rep so for a record label. And so we became really good friends having dinner, and um, he said, hey, I would love to listen to your music. And we said, okay, cool. So we walked into his car, and we plugged our, our album into um, his CD player, and he listened to the music, and he's like, guys, like, the music is really, really good. Like, I'm really impressed. And he said, but your album artwork. He's like, it's not bad, but like, what do you guys wear on stage? And I thought this was a really weird question for him to ask this. And I said, well, we're musicians, whatever the hell we want to wear. I mean, like, whatever we want, right? We're rebels, we're renegades. And he's like, I can't do that. He's like, go back to Dallas. Each one of you guys go spend $100, $120 on clothes and allow that to be your uniform. And every time you're on stage, I want you guys to wear this uniform, right? And I was like, okay, well, what do we have to lose? So we came back to Dallas, and I created this vision for what would be our quote-unquote uniforms. And all it was was all of the guys had to dress in black except for the lead singer. I wanted him to wear black pants and a white shirt of some sort. And it didn't matter what style, just as long as you're dressed in the same color. So he, the lead singer wore uh, black skinnies, a white v-neck. We all wore, like, some type of black skinnies and black T-shirts. I had, like, a, a T-shirt and a black and white tie. So when we walked into our record label showcase two weeks later in Nashville, Tennessee, when we walked into the building as this cohesive unit for the very first time in our careers, everybody was like, <laughs> right? Like we had this perceived image. And then when we took the stage and we delivered upon that perceived perception, instantaneously, everybody was like, holy shit, these guys are really good. And we ultimately got offered a deal right there on the spot. And then after we left that location, we went to have dinner at Cracker Barrel. And right when we walked in the door, because we're still dressed like a band, like the hostess and the waitress wanted our autographs, and they had no clue who we were. We didn't even have radio plays, so nobody knew who we were, but it was all based about the perceived image. So bridging this back into the game of Twitter, like, Setting up your, your profile, this place of power, is the same thing. So lots of people just throw random images up in this area, this header area, this 3,000 by 1,000 pixel area. But use that and design a graphic that's positioning you as that rock star, positioning you as that authority because it's creating a perceived image upon the minds of the customer. And when you show up to the sales call, the Skype's call, or the podcaster, wherever they're coming to experience you, then you get to leap, you get to live up to that expectation and then closing the deal becomes easier. So I know it's kind of a long-winded story, but there's lots of value in that and I wanted to share that. So that would be the first piece is this idea of power. Okay. I love that. Talk about, talk about plan. Sure. So in the planning piece, you have to just create content. So I always tell people like tweet at least nine times a day and lots of people freak out like, oh my gosh, what am I going to say nine times a day? And I totally get it. 
So if you come, like, I, when I first started, I sit down at the blank screen and the cursor's blinking at you, and you're like, ah, oh, my goodness, like, what am I going to say here? I don't say. Like, learn to create a spreadsheet. Like, let the spreadsheet run your life. And, like, I'm super creative, so the idea of having, like, a spreadsheet, like, totally turned me off to begin with. But once I learned the power of it, it actually allowed me to be more creative. So I would consciously think through, okay, well, this is what my brand, my company, my voice stands for. This is what I stand against. What types of tweets do I want to create? So I was like, okay, I got to promote my blog. I want to do some inspirational images. I want to do inspirational videos. I want to do quick tips. I want to do some statistics. I want to promote somebody that I dislike. I want to do some third-party shares sharing, you know, relevant content. Ultimately, you're creating a Twitter feed where you're becoming the go-to source for information in your niche. Like, you are the advocate for your industry within your niche. And if you do that consistently, then people are like, oh, man, these people always publish great content, right? So just let the spreadsheet do the work for you. Like, you just put it in there, and then once you have that, then you tweet out your tweets nine times a day. Um, I use Hootsuite, schedule all that out. I use their auto schedule feature so you don't have to worry about like what times the day it's dropping. They'll pick it for you. And their algorithm actually has a way of knowing when to get your tweets the best exposure. So just take it, make it easy. I'm all about simplification. Just use Hootsuite, you just turn on the auto schedule feature. It's completely free. And then just publish your nine tweets a day and it will, you can schedule out, out as long as you would like to. So that would be the idea of plan. Now, the other piece of this is you have to understand that that's like one-way communication, like you're just pushing content. And Twitter is ultimately a two-way conversation if you want to get value from using the platform. So once you're pushing content and people are responding to it, a lot of people make the mistake when people respond to them. They say, hey, thanks for following me, because maybe they find their content and they're like, oh, I want to follow this person. And they'll be like, thanks for following me. And then they respond, you're welcome. And like, end of conversation. That would be like you going to this Christmas party and you have your long lost cousins that you haven't spoken to in like years. And you're like, dude, how long? I mean, what have you been up to? They're like, how much? And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, um, what, do you, what are your plans? Like, I mean, it's been forever. Like, just what are your plans? I don't got much going on, dude. It's simple. Okay, you're really boring. I'm going to go talk to somebody else in the family that actually wants to have a good conversation here. So don't make that mistake on Twitter because in the real world, like offline, we don't communicate that way. We actually have engaging conversations by asking engaging questions to engaging people. And I don't know why people don't like put this together and understand that technology is just an extension of who we are in the physical form and how we operate. And if we want to show up powerfully and use technology to ultimately disseminate our message further, bring the skill sets that we have offline and bridge them into the technology online. So the way that we ask questions in a networking setting, bring that into the game of Twitter and start asking these empowering questions. Because when you do that, you ultimately start getting into these very amazing conversations, and these conversations start turning into referral partners. They start turning into sales. And if you study anything about sales, you understand that the person asking the questions is in control of the conversation. So if you have your business set up correctly, like you have the website, you have your lead opt-in, uh, you have a podcast, you have places you can point them, you can start asking these questions to ultimately guide the person down the path that you want, which would be your opt-in offer, which may be a phone call, which could be, for the local business, a coffee meeting. It could be a Skype conversation, whatever that next logical step is. See, lots of people on Twitter, they make the mistake of like not thinking that relationships are everything in the world. Even the game of online social media, like relationships are everything and they burn the relationship by just promoting their shit like straight up off the bat They're like hey thanks for following me will you go download my thing no i don't want to go download your thing i don't even know who you are like you wouldn't ask me that in the physical form if i was standing in front of you so why would you apply that method of communication right here like you're going to burn the bridge instead ask me a qualifying question and then if i'm a good fit for what you have going on ask me if you would like me, if, you would, if I want you to send me the thing that you have going on, if the answer is yes, then send it to me. Like, people that get this, they start building their list. 
they actually start setting up sales conversation. They start getting paid by using Twitter because they understand that it's not about a one-way conversation. It's not about pushing content. It's actually about building relationships. So that's the idea of the plan. It's like publish the nine uh, types of tweets, right, every single day. So you're becoming an authority in your industry and you're adding value into your community. But then start engaging people into these conversations to then pull them into whatever is the proper medium of choice. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. Let me, let me just ask a quick cl- uh, clarification question in that you're talking about tweeting nine times a day. What specifically are you talking about questions? Are you talking about images? Are you talking about statements? What have you found um, is, is the best way to go there? Yeah, so inspirational quotes like work really, really good, whether these are just literally text. Um, images, uh, like people love motivation for whatever reason, like they can't get enough of that stuff. So those work really, really, really well um, for just engagement, right? And then again, just asking like ridiculous questions, like sometimes like, what's your favorite dog? Mine's a Weimaraner. Like people respond and be like, oh, mine's a retriever, mine's a, a this, you know, like if that's relevant, like if you own cats, like don't ask people like what their favorite dog is if you don't own dogs, like that would just be stupid. but. Again, these are types of questions that you would ask in a normal conversation setting. And just by keeping it simple, people start engaging. And people say, well, what's, what's the value of talking about your dog if you're selling jujitsu? Well, if you have a dog, you're going to talk about those types of things offline anyway with other people. So it's an extension of you and your brand and your personality. So it's going to help you connect with other people who like dogs. So it's a connection point. It's also humanizing your brand. But more importantly, when people start engaging this, you're getting more organic exposure more exposure and more reach and more impressions, right? So it's all it's ultimately giving you more eyeballs looking at your brand, and that's why, you know, I say promote your blog post at least twice a day. And this is another thing, Jason, a lot of people don't understand. It's like, you know, for you, for instance, Jason, like you're putting out these amazing pieces of content on your show very, very consistently, and I don't really know what episode number I am. I, I probably should know, but I don't know. But I know you've done a lot of episodes before that, and there's a ton of amazing uh, interviews that are really good that people need to be listening to. And if you spent your sole focus just promoting the show and then let the other ones die, you would be doing your brand a disservice because these still have value and lots of people haven't heard them. So I always tell people, and this is the bridge to the people listening, is like continue to promote your old content if it's still relevant to the marketplace because you spent a lot of time and a lot of money creating that content. A lot of people think like, oh, new content, have to promote it, Off the other one just kind of sit there on float. Like, use Twitter because you can tweet, I'm saying at least nine times a day because the average lifespan of a tweet is 18 minutes. It's not like Facebook where if you do four posts a day, people like want to shoot you in the face because you're in their feed all the time. Twitter's not that way. The average lifespan, 18 uh, minutes. So you can do like lots of tweets in a day. So continue to promote that old uh, content because it's still relevant and valuable to the marketplace. That's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. All right. Talk to me about promotion because, yeah, and then quite honestly, first of all, I, I have to just thank you. The, uh, the action steps that you've actually just laid out here are, are ridiculous. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know how this happened, but I kind of became known for like coming on shows like this and delivering ridiculous amounts of content that people walk away with. And if they do it, they get results. And I'm like, dude, that's like the best content ever comes to some other. So it's kind of cool being known that way. Well, hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Talk to me about promotion because this, this is actually, I got to believe, where the, uh, the rubber meets the road, right? Yeah. So, you know, power and plan do really well. Okay. But if you go into what we're going to talk about now, which is the promotion, it's like adding fuel onto the fire. It's like you already got the fire going and you're putting gasoline and it's, it's going to burn hotter and it's going to burn faster. And this is where I I have to tell people before we get into this, like getting results with Twitter is like getting results in our body. So like if we want to lose weight, we want to tone up, we want to to do whatever it is in our bodies. It doesn't matter. Like the only way to get the result is to go in the gym, put in the 30 minutes of work a day consistently, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, like you have to do the work. And if you don't do the work, you don't get the results. And there's nobody to blame but you for not doing the work. And if you get the results and you want to keep the results, you continue to go to the gym and put in the work. So Doing Twitter, like getting results on Twitter is the exact same thing. Like you're at the place of power. You're creating the content every single day. Now the next piece of this is promotion. So lots of people, they make the mistake of like, okay, I'm at power. I've done the, I've done the, the content and they wait for people to come to them. I hate waiting. Like I'm ridiculously impatient and I'm very results driven. So I go to my people. So 
I say find the top five podcasters, authors, speakers, associations, thought leaders within your industry, and then who, and then find out if they're on Twitter, okay? And if they're on Twitter and your company, your brand, your message has a similar message to those people, you can assume like, okay, well, if they like their message, I bet they would be open to consuming my message. <laughs> and so you just go into who's following those influencers, set a timer on your phone for 15 minutes a day, and follow as many people as you can who's following that influencer who has a profile image, a bio, and a cover photo, because you can kind of weed out the people who are not active and are active, just kind of using those three criteria. 15 minutes a day, however many you can get in that 15 minutes a day. It's not about a quantity of people. This is about connecting with quality people, right? And so by you following the people who are following the influencers who have a similar message as you, when you follow them, they get a notification that says, hey, Jason followed me. And I'm like, man, who's this Jason guy? They click to the profile. Now guess what's happening? They see your powerful profile image. They see the bio. And you're connecting with your target market so that, hmm, interesting, I bet he can help me. Boom, that is a click-through to your website. Now, if your website set up to capture leads and your opt-in offer is congruent with what you say in your power statement, then you're going to start building your list. Okay? The other thing is they're going to say, thanks for following me. And then you get to engage them into conversations. And if you start engaging enough people in conversations – and you are being at this place of power personally, I assure you the opportunities that flow forth from this, because it's literally networking, are amazing. You start becoming guests on podcasts. You start getting to uh, uh, speak at events. You start finding referral partners. You start finding clients. And this doesn't happen every single time you do, just like it doesn't happen every single time you go to a networking event. But the reality is you get to build relationships from your computer anywhere in the world, and if you do this correctly, the opportunities that come from this are like mind-blowing. And if you just do this, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 15 minutes a day, follows many people that are following the influencers, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 15 minutes a day, and then stop following people Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like I told you, it's a workout routine. Take the days off, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. On that following Monday, I want people to use some software called Manage... Flitter. So it's manage Flitter, F L I T T E R dot com. They should pay me for like totally promoting them. I promote them all the time. <laughs> and so use the software. The free version will, will suffice for you on this uh, stage of the, the game anyway. Then unfollow anybody who hasn't followed you back from that week's activities. That way you're keeping your following and follow ratio uh, um, under control so you can continue playing what I call the follow game. And then after you unfollow the people who haven't followed you back, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you do the work of following the people who's following uh, those influencers. Take it off Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Come back the next Monday, unfollow the people who haven't followed you back. And that is like the, the fire that's working everything because it's you're getting your content actively in front of your target market. You're getting your profile actively in front of your target market. Um, that's how I've been able to grow my following to over, I think we're over 23,000 people. Um, I've never paid for like a promoted tweet or anything like that. It's just been done with hard work, just executed consistently over time. And you don't have to have 20,000 followers to get results on Twitter. I was, I was getting clients when I only had 2,000, when I had 3,000 uh, people following me on Twitter. It's, it's not a numbers game, guys. Like don't think that it is. This is literally about connecting with quality people and using Twitter as this beautiful, brilliant networking tool. And the only way that you do that is, again, using it as an extension of who in the heck you are in real life. This is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. This is, I, I got to tell you, I, I mean, I, and I've, I've had the opportunity to, to interview a number of folks on Twitter. And got to tell you, this is, this is the first time I've ever seen a clear-cut, laid-out plan that is completely logical. Like, I, I, I get why it works. <laughs> right? Like, there's no bullshit here. This, this, is, this is what it is. Like, this works. 
Yeah. I mean, the webinars that I do, and we teach this stuff, man, just like this. I, I call the webinars the proven Twitter marketing plan to results. Um, even my, my program, Tweet Like a Rockstar, like that's exactly what it is. It's showing you exactly how to do this stuff. And there's, there's advanced stuff that we could go into and I teach within the course, which is like how to automate because there are ways to automate. And uh, Jason, you've probably seen like the people who send you the stupid direct messages that like, thank you for following me. Go buy my shit. Yeah. Like you can't do that. Like you, you don't treat people that way. You can't become a spammer, but there are ways to genuinely automate things where it feels very natural. And what I just got them teaching this here in Dallas just a couple weeks ago and people were blown away because I tell people, you have to learn how to automate genuine conversation, which sounds like an oxymoron, but if you take the time to think through, okay, if this happens and it happens with this types of person, well, then I want to send these types of tweets within an hour after they take an action. It feels ridiculously genuine because you have transferred your intent by doing the work previously, and there's ways to ultimately automate the first touch point with people. Um, and then also using like direct messages to to sort out like who's following you. Let's say if you just if you want to run a promotion just to authors, you could just run a promotion, a direct message to authors, and it's like, hey, I noticed you an author. I'm doing this thing. I really think it'd benefit you. Link like that feels really congruent. It's not it's not a nasty spammy message. Which is exactly, I mean, that's what we're all used to, right? Yeah, and, and it stands out because most people are totally used to it. I was blown away by how many people like hate Twitter due to that stuff and how many people think it's just for branding. And it can be used for that, but there, it can be used a totally different way, which is what I use it for, and it's, and it's always worked for me. This is fabulous. All right, it is time for our resource of the week. So, AJ, tell me this. How can my listeners find out more about you and how about you've actually gone and help so many entrepreneurs to succeed and how you can actually help them. Yeah. The, I mean, the best thing that they could do is just go to ajamex.com. Um, there's a report there they can grab. It, it's uh, the seven deadly Twitter mistakes. It's not just like, Hey guys, these are the mistakes. As you guys can see, I'm all about like solutions and like giving you guys real shit to get results. So it's like, this is the mistake. Here's the solution. Go to ajamix.com, grab that. Um, the other thing that you could do if you wanted to take a deep dive and get results fast with Twitter is head over to tweetlikearockstar.com um, and pick up the, the program. It's literally like being right over my shoulder. I'm walking you through everything step by step by step by step. Just follow along, do the work, and I promise you it gets results. So the two sites, www.ajamyx.com and then tweetlikearockstar.com. You well, got it. All one. Folks, this is, this is a no-brainer. I mean... Look at this. For you guys invested what twenty five minutes in a podcast. Um, imagine, imagine what you get <laughs> um, with uh, with the courses. This is this is unreal. All right, AJ, thank you so much for joining me today. I know how busy you are, so it, it, it means the world to me that you'd uh, you share some of your time and some of your expertise with us. Ah, oh, dude, I'm just grateful that I have the opportunity to share with everybody, Ben. I really appreciate the invitation. That's fabulous, fabulous. These are great tips, and uh, it was great to catch up with you. Folks, that is all the time we've got today. Thanks so much for tuning in to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. For more info about private coaching or to see if you'd benefit from one of our mastermind groups, visit me over at www.jasonmsilverman.com. I look forward to helping you achieve the success that you deserve. Until next time, let me leave you with this. Get out there and be the real deal. Set a goal, make a plan, work like hell towards it, and achieve the success that's waiting for you. Now's the time. Get out there and make it happen. This has been Jason Silverman, and I hope you have a spectacular week. You've been listening to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. To access the great resources mentioned in the show and for information on coaching and mastermind group opportunities with Jason, please visit jasonmsilverman.com.